next step in building the base cabinets for the combination desk, assembly, table, clutter catcher, I don't know, got to come up with a name for this project. The next step is to build drawers. Now these drawers are pretty big. They're going to be about 23 inches by 23 inches and some of them will contain some pretty heavy stuff. So we need a good substantial joint, but we want something that's quick to make as well. So let's take a look at some different ways to make joinery in plywood drawer sides. So the first joint I want to give some consideration to is a simple joint that I've done on small drawers in the past, and it is something like this. This joint is uh, very easy. You just simply set up a router bit in the router table, or could even do this on the table saw with a dado blade, or just do it with a regular blade. It's a pretty good joint. Uh, if this is half inch wide plywood, you can see that there's a half inch here and then a quarter inch deep here. So that gives about three quarters of an inch of gluing surface. Even though it's easy to make, the problem with the joint is is that if you're if you make this the front and you're pulling on the drawer this way there's not much there to give the joint strength that uh, that might work good on a small drawer but I'm not sure it's going to work on a big drawer so another joint that I gave some consideration to is just a small takeoff on that joint and it would look something like this. Uh, the idea with this joint is, is to cut a rabbit half the uh, thickness of the material here in the edge of this board and a rabbit half the thickness of the material on this board and put the two pieces together. Since this is going to be half inch plywood, you'd have a quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, and you'd still have three quarter inches of uh, gluing area it would definitely be uh, a little stronger than the other joint. This joint would also have a little bit more racking strength. So this is a possibility as well and it would be relatively easy to make. But let's take a look at a variation of that. This is a joint that brings a little bit of complexity in but offers a great deal of pull resistant strength. The advantage of this joint is in this direction the uh, strength that this little nubbin out here gives in pulling on this drawer. So this is a distinct possibility but let's look at one more joint. Okay, now this joint, if this was executed, would give a great deal of pull resistance strength, particularly in this direction. It would give a great deal of strength against racking because of the sheer surface area in there. So the question is, is how to execute a joint like that and whether or not it can be done at uh, let's call it production speed. So let's take a look and see if we can execute this joint. So I've got all the base pieces cut out. They're cut to width and they're cut to length for the fronts and the sides. And I've also cut out a set of test pieces to run some, uh, run some test cuts on the uh, router table for the joinery. Let me show you the joint itself, the sequence we're gonna take and then how I've got the router table initially set up. Okay, now this is the joint that we've kind of decided to attempt to make and it's going to be made with a series of cuts on the router table. Now the first cut that I need to make is to make this long groove in the edge of the, uh, of the side of the drawer piece. This is actually going to be the front piece of each drawer and the back piece will be a mirror image of that. So what I need to do is I need to cut a groove. Now, this is a 5 32nd inch notch. And the reason for that is because this half inch plywood is 15 32nds of an inch wide, or thick, I mean. 
So we want to take a 5 32nd inch uh, groove just right down the middle, right out of the middle chunk of that board. So we can't, 5 32nd inch bits are really difficult to find. And the only one I could find had a quarter inch shank. I'm not a big fan of quarter inch shanks, but it's all I could get. So I'm actually going to do this cut in two passes. I'm going to take about half the thickness, and, and then I'm going to raise the bit up and take the rest. So it'll be two cuts, each end of each board, for the uh, fronts and backs. The second cut, then, is going to be to take off a section of that so that I wind up with this little profile right here. That'll basically form the fronts and the backs of the two pieces. Then there's really only one cut on the sides, even though it looks a little more complicated than that. It actually boils down to just being one cut, and that's the cut, the position of that cut will determine how tight this joint is. So let's see how the router table is set up right now for this first cut. Okay, so since I wanted to get this 5 32nd inch bit, basically 5 32nd inch from the fence, I did a little obsessing over how I was going to get that, and then suddenly realized that a real simple methodology was going to be to simply get a 5 32nd inch drill bit, set it between the fence and the router bit, and use that to set it up. Works kind of like a little setup block. I made a test cut. And uh, my test cut, as you can see, um, came out pretty much dead center in the middle of this board. We'll come back after the first cut and deepen that cut a little bit so that the depth of that cut is exactly the same as the thickness of a piece of plywood. Can you see that? We got a groove. A side benefit of uh, marking these things, besides just keeping all the pieces straight, is that uh, you also have a face that's marked. That helps in orientation. So what I'm doing on all these cuts is just doing it so my markings are facing this way. So that there's consistency. So, I've made the uh, first pass through all the drawer fronts and backs. Uh, now I've just got to raise the bit up and deepen that cut so that it's the same as the thickness of the plywood that I'm using. So I just moved the fingerboard out of the way. I don't want to move my fence because it's set just right. And I'm just going to raise the bit up until it matches this piece of plywood. And the easiest way to do that is to set a piece of the plywood right here and then set another piece over it. And then I'm just going to raise the bit up until it just touches that piece of plywood. And there we go. So far, so good. Okay, so now after lowering this down, and setting the fence basically flush with the edge of the blade, I started making test cuts and moving the fence back incrementally until I got my pieces here to fit just right. What I wanted to do was take off just the right amount there so that my test piece would fit in there nice and snug and make a good joint. So there we go. Nice and tight there and nice and tight there and you can kind of see what the uh, hopefully you can kind of see what the finished joint is going to look like. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just using a miter gauge. This happens to be off my uh, table saw and I'm just going to run it right through here and clip off this edge right here. So let's try the other end, make sure we get it right here, and let's see how it fits.
Oh yeah, that looks nice. Basically, I've always been of the opinion if a joint will hold itself together without glue, it's probably a pretty decent joint. Okay, so let's review where we've been in the last oh, two hours here. So the first thing that we did was we notched this board right dead center in the middle with a 532nd inch bit. Uh, then we raised the bit up to deepen this notch so that the notch equals the thickness of the half inch plywood. Then laid this board down flat, changed the router setup, same bit, and took off one of these tongues at half the thickness of the half inch nominal half inch plywood. So what that did was that allowed this interlocking piece with the groove in it to fit right in here like so. So I've changed back now to this setup took a couple of test cuts, had to make some minor little changes, a uh, thousandth here and a thousandth there to get it just right, and have test cut and uh, gotten it where I wanted it, and cut out the rest of the pieces for the so-called test drawer. And I've got that assembled over here, so let's take a look and see what the finished joint looks like. Okay, so this is the first cut that we made and then we deepened it and then we cut off the tongue and then the side piece of the drawer simply has one groove cut in there and correctly positioned so that the pieces slide together like that. Okay, after uh, milling out all of the drawer fronts, backs, and sides and getting them ready for the joinery, the last thing that I need to do is to cut a groove along uh, the edge of all four pieces of each drawer to accept the drawer bottom. So I calculated the size that I needed and then tried to figure out what to make them out of. Now I've made drawer bottoms in small drawers out of quarter inch hardboard or masonite and it works pretty good. Um, I've used quarter inch plywood as well but <clears throat> with these big almost two foot square boards or drawers, I was afraid I was going to get some sagging, particularly if I put something heavy in there. So I went out and looked around locally to see what I could find, and the best I could find was some 3 8 inch BC rated uh, plywood. Looks more like a CD rating to me, but then I'm kind of picky. Went through and fished through a couple of dozen sheets until I found two sheets that looked pretty good and figured I should be able to get nine drawer bottoms out of two four by eight sheets of plywood. Uh, what I did was I ganged them up together and uh, cut off a nice neat edge and then cut them all to exactly the same size using the Festool TS55 plunge cut saw and the guide rail system. Worked like a champ in fact, I was having so much fun cutting them, I wound up cutting a dozen lost track, but a few extras, what the heck. I'll probably just pick and choose the best ones out of the bunch. So let me get that phone and then we'll, we'll get to work making these drawers. Now, rather than fiddle with a dado stack, um, what I'm doing is I'm just... Uh, making multiple passes with a regular saw blade. Okay, after milling out all the rest of the drawer parts, uh, sat down over a couple of cups of coffee last night, nice and leisurely, and sanded all the inside faces of these uh, drawer sides, knocked off any little splinters or anything there was around uh, where the joints are cut, and these are pretty much ready to go. I also took the uh, bottom panels that were cut out 
and I sanded the edges of those so that they could go into the uh, grooves a little bit easier and sanded the face. Not necessarily going to finish the insides of these drawers, but I don't want to get splinters either. Got all the implements for gluing laid out. Got my extend glue because I like to have the extra time to work with it. Got a little paper plate here. I'm going to spill out some of the glue on there and then use the brush to apply it. Wet paper towel to get the sticky off my hands. And I got my clamps sort of preset size wise. So we're ready to start gluing up drawers. times. So come back to the next video and we'll, uh, we'll put the drawer slides and the hardware on. Uh, we'll put the false fronts on the drawers. We'll face off the edging of the plywood and put the casters on the bottom and then we're ready to build the top. See you next time. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.